You guys remember, if you've been watching me a while, the homeless emergency shelter? This is just a bigger version. Um, I'm using six millimeter fluted plastic, had these sheets sitting in the bin forever. I was going to use them for boats, but I made enough boats. And I've been always wanting to do this. Winter's coming up. Uh, yeah, so I've seen quite a few out there that people have built. They always seem to me to be overbuilt and a little too expensive and complex to put together. You know me, I like to make things simple. Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. So I'm liking what I see here. Um, I think I'll go to the hardware store and lumberyard and get some materials and stay tuned. See what happens. On this project, I wanted to go ahead and uh, pick up all the parts from hardware stores and lumberyards just to make sure that I can figure out the true cost of this thing. Uh, but there is about 10% of materials where I had on hand, that was paint and whatnot, and I kind of priced that out of what you'd probably pay for uh, at a store. Um, total, this came to $850. Here I'm doing the uh, base floor. I found out that this is the best technique. Now I was tried one project using uh, pallets, and that just took forever to do. Um, part of the board. I hate to say it, but um, paneling like wood and such in the building industry is very similar to the food you eat. The less you pay, the more crap you get in it. And that's kind of what OSB is all about. It's $20 a sheet for like 5 eighths by 4 by 8 but it puts a lot of glue in there. Um, the siding I used on my last project, the uh, uh, she shed, I had T111 um, siding and that was $48 a sheet. Anyway, I've used OSB before. You just got to paint it up real good and let it gas off. Well, got a bit done today. Got the floor made. Uh, this is the skin for the back wall and then this is the front door uh, wall. Okay, I've got the wall going. I'm looking to secure it down to the floor. I decided to uh, put the smooth side of the OSB facing in, in the rough out. So it took four sheets to do the roof, roof slash walls, and some uh, plastic uh, greenhouse H channel to join them together in the center. I got that at Lowe's too. All this is at Lowe's, Home Depot. Everything except course the six millimeter fluid plastic which is hard to come by I had to go to a plastic supply place in downtown Seattle to find it shelf so the horizontal framing on the interior basically two by four is split down the center I got a table saw saved me a lot of cost buying the two by threes same with the bedding I didn't show this, but after making the bed frame, I threw down a sheet of a T111 leftover from my uh, she shed that I had just built. This I got from Amazon, 99 bucks, pretty good deal. It's an RV window with bug screen and lockable window. Here I'm just putting some shelves together and outfitting it for a place to live. Airbnb could be your young adult child wants to get out of the home make this stick it in the backyard you know they most have everything there they'll need I didn't always have the right length of screws so here I'm trimming the tips of things that are hanging outside like the Conestoga homeless shelter with their large overhang I compromised and just settled for this little guy but I think they're important I used an elastomeric paint to do a good priming coat on this uh, OSB. I've used this technique of splitting a 1x2x8-foot uh, PVC trim board down the center and using it to uh, support the front and back wall to the roof itself. Here you can see a few examples of that in the past. And it works out pretty good. I just used kills for the primer and 
painted it with a uh, basic white. I made sure all the interior was painted. Here's my mustard yellow paint that I had kicking around. I kind of like it. I even uh, stained the uh, horizontal boards there, if you can tell. Yeah. I think it's important to have a nice floor. This I bought at Lowe's, I believe. Can't remember if it was a remnant or sold just like this. It's a 12 by 5. You can tell it's a little short on the size, but a little bit of remnant that I put in the uh, closet area. This guy came from Amazon, 10 bucks. I think uh, ventilation fans are pretty critical in these little structures. Finally getting my window in, that was a happy day. Here I am putting an extension cord up in a corner. I was going to put an RV plug, but uh, keep that sample stupid, right? <laughs> I had to figure out a way to move this thing all by myself. So here I'm making a wheel out of a PVC decking material that I had kicking around. This will slide right underneath the frame, and you'll see that in motion in just a moment. After studying a lot of builders who like to build on their own, I learned one thing. It's called leverage. I just decided to use some 2x4 pressure treated boards to keep this off of the ground and keep the uh, wood base from rotting. Here too you can see the uh, plastic uh, that caps the panels at the bottom. This helps insulate the panels by trapping the air inside. Big bookshelf brackets, that's all I used, 1x4, to help support this 2x8 half sheet of fluted plastic. Another one can be added to the back for, say, a homeless person in transition. Normally they'll have a bicycle to get around. Good way to keep it dry. For the eave cap, I had some 4mm fluted plastic kicking around. Screwed that down into the uh, beams. Let's go inside, take a look at what um, what I've created. Got your door lock here, right? And you also have your interior lock. So this is like a computer station. You could turn the computer toward the fluted plastic wall, but I just liked this setup. This while you're looking out inside your shelter, out the window. So here's the Coroplast um, sits bath tray. You can call it a bathtub if you want. It's a four foot by three foot sheet of Coroplast, folded up, origami style, kind of like a to-go box in a Chinese restaurant. Um, the sides are eight inches high. Very simple. And folds up. I'm showing this because I have no shower cleaning facilities. Uppers can make a uh, foldable uh, sits bath tray and uh, use that to get clean in. Here's some reasons why we have such a bad homeless situation. Back in the early 70s, my grandfather came to live in the same state as us. He came from Ogden, Utah, and he moved into a little flop house, which is a little apartment complex, one room, shared bathroom, little hot plate, his bed, simple. Um, I'm going to read some here out of the internet. People who lived in plop houses were often called transients and well between homes. Over time, a coalition of real estate owners and reformers created rules that effectively banned an affordable private sector urban housing for those at the bottom of the pay scale. These rules included occupancy limits and requirements for private bathrooms, kitchens, and parking spaces. My grandfather was a, a Yugoslavian immigrant, came here when he was 14 years old, and he learned in the end to be a salesman of used furniture out of his home. Started that during the Depression days, selling bags of coal, but in the end he didn't have any pension or anything. This is all he could afford. Just as a lot of people today don't really have the old pensions like some of us, like me, have now. If you study some of the homeless issues of who's out there homeless, you'll find out the majority of them have mental problems. Hello. Um, but in 1980, um, Jimmy Carter enacted the MHSA Act, 
which uh, provided grants to community mental health centers to you know, help keep them going. But unfortunately, everybody was down on taxes. And when you know, President Ronald Reagan came in, first thing he went after was this particular act and dismantled it in 1981. And here's another major reason. Let's talk drugs. The current opioid crisis ranks as one of the most devastating public health catastrophes of our time. It started in the mid-1990s when the powerful agent oxycodone, promoted by Purdue Pharma and approved by the FDA, triggered the first wave of deaths linked to use of legal prescription opioids. Then came a second wave of deaths from a heroin market that expanded its track uh, already addicted people. More recently, a third wave of deaths has arisen from illegal synthetic opioids like fentanyl. These crises represented a multi-system failure of regulation. Oxycontin approval is one example. The Purdue Pharma was later shown to have presented a fraudulent description of the drug as less addictive than other opioids. The profit motive of the pharmaceutical industry remains ever-present. Lovely. Well, I can go on and on about this subject, but um, maybe I've been watching too many Lewis Black rants. <laughs> but, you know, it's a frustrating topic. Anyway, back to my little shelter. I made it so you can tear it apart easy enough and uh, erect it, maybe with just two people. It'd take two people to grab the uh, floor and move it, um, pack down. It may be able to be packed down into an 8x8 package. Um, I don't want to disassemble this right here. It takes quite a while to join these two panels and make it, you know, interlock on the H channel. Here I'm just pointing out uh, this one sheet and how it was utilized to cover one wall. Little scabs there were from other pieces. That's basically one sheet of 4x8 particle board. And in the back here, I Join that together just using some screws. So there it is. It's my little shelter. It could be used for an office, shed, 850 bucks. Not bad. Pretty sturdy. I had a pretty good storm the other day, not a drop inside. There is a little condensation issues, but there are allowances for adding uh, foam insulation on the inside. So anyway, there you go, everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.